Now let's talk about how the any state node works. In this example, instead of using the entry node, we've got multiple states hooked to the any state. The timelines on the graph are changing the position of the rectangle. We have one where the position is to the left, another where the position's in the middle, and the last one moves the rectangle to the right. In the state machine, we have a number input that is controlling the transitions of our states. So one will move our square to the left, two will put it in the center, and three will move it to the right side. Now let's play the state machine and see what happens. As we change our number input from one to two, you can see that our square moves and same when we go to three. By changing the value, we're changing the position of our square. The any state node allows us to change to a different state at any time, regardless of what state it's already in. This allows us to set up a complex web of nodes without having to make a ton of transitions. Now, if we add some duration to our transitions and we start messing with the number input again, you'll see that they're actually uh, interpolating between the different positions. You'll see that if we go to one to two, we're making small movements, but we can also go between one and three and make big movements, and this will still interpolate. Again, it's like we hooked all of these states up with different transitions, just without the headache. Just like with other transitions, we can add cubic interpolation to make the transition between the two positions look a lot better. Using the same logic, we've set up this more complex example. Now this state machine uses the same logic. If we click on the different stars, the different animation, depending on the star that we click on, will play. And instead of having to set up a complex web of transitions, we just have them all hooked to the any state so we can go from one state to any of the other states that we need to. Again, this is being controlled by this rating number input. And depending on what the number is, we'll go to that star. On each star, we've added a listener that when you point her down, it will change that rating input to go to the star that we've clicked on. So if we click on one, it'll go to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, five to five. Now you'll see in the timelines that we have a lot more keys set in this example um, than we did in the previous example. Now the important thing to note here is that because we can change the position and scale uh, depending on the different star, we've had to key those properties and all the other animations so that as we switch between them, we don't have any problems. Speaking of problems, let's look at some common errors that we'll run into with the any state. To explore the first problem, we're gonna need to add an additional state that this animation here can leave to. So we've got this spin animation and it just controls the rotation of our rectangle. Now, if we go back to the state machine, we're gonna add that spin animation just below our animation three and create a transition that has an exit time of 100%. So what we would expect to happen here is that our third animation plays and then it goes into the spinning animation. Now let's play the state machine and see what happens. Now when we change the number input to three, you'll see that that animation plays and then the spin doesn't work all the way. Now what you're seeing is that when the transition between timeline three and the spin animation happens, the any state transition takes over because it can go from any state into the state that it's linked to, that transition is always gonna take priority. So if we have something like a number input, which is always staying the same, that transition is gonna happen over and over and over again. Now the same thing would happen if we used a Boolean input. Because that value is always gonna stay the same or it's constant, that transition is gonna happen over and over again. So to fix this, we can actually use a trigger. So we've added three triggers and now let's go back and change out our condition. So instead of the number, let's add trigger one for the first transition, trigger two for the second transition, 
and then trigger three for the third transition. Now that we've got that done, we can go ahead and remove our number input and let's test the state machine. So if we hit trigger two, it works, trigger one works, trigger three, it plays and then goes into our looping animation, which is exactly what we were looking for. Now again, the reason that this works is that triggers only happen once, but things like booleans and numbers are always holding that same value and that any state is always checking to see if that condition is true. So a number that stays on one is always going to be one. And so it's going to cause that trigger or that transition to happen over and over and over again. Same thing with a Boolean. If your Boolean is uh, false and that's going to cause the transition, that's going to stay false. And so that transition is going to happen over and over and over again. So try a trigger instead.